When I first saw the Rocket TCA here, it was hard to miss the strikingly beautiful angular revision to the iconic E61 group. They really have not changed at all in decades. Could the Apartmento TCA be the machine to explore your dreams? Let's find out, shall we? Coming up, I'll dig into this brand new toy. We'll get the story of Rocket's origins and their design philosophy. We'll leave no escape, no place to hide as we get test results for frothing performance and brew temperatures. We'll check out stock flow rates and look at flow rate graphs for machines equipped with flow control like this one here. In the end, we'll find out what your fate might have in store with the Rocket Apartmento TCA. I first got to know Rocket Machines about a decade ago. It's around the time their dual boiler R58 came out. At the time, this guy, Andrew Mio, was in charge of the look of the external design of the machines. In 2013, he visited me here in this studio. It was a little oranger back then. Uh, here he is from that visit saying sexy in a way only a New Zealander living in Milan can do. If you've got two products there and one is kind of got a sexy mystique about it and I think that's what we're trying to do with our machines. We're trying to make them a bit sexier than our competition um, and when you walk in and you see it sitting there and you've got the quirky R that says something, it gives it perhaps a bit more personality. Now later in that talk Andrew went into how he really doesn't like digital displays on machines and now he's no longer with Rocket but that philosophy continues. You really don't see visible PID or other digital displays on rocket machines. You know, they call it sexy, a little quirky, the iconic R always on the steam valves. You know, I always thought rocket machines, you know, it's really easy to pick them out from across a room with their unique styling. Today, Rocket is run by Daniele Barenbrook. He's been there since Rocket's inception in 2007. I met him during a visit to Rocket in Milan in 2018. Now, Daniele was quite literally born into espresso. His father, Friedrich, with him here during my visit in 2018, was the inspiration behind the legendary designs of ECM machines in the 1980s. The original Apartamento debuted over six years ago. Very popular machine, you know, small in size, really easy to use. So what's the big change? Of course, there's the new look of the E61 group, but the big deal here is the Apartamento TCA is a PID machine. TCA stands for Temperature Control Adjustment. Now, the old Apartamento was a pressure stat machine. This one here, the TCA, it's a PID machine, which stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. Now, that's an algorithm that allows for very precise control of boiler temperatures. That means that you can set a brew temperature based on a coffee's roast level or change brew temperatures to see how it affects a particular coffee's flavor. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with machines that use pressure stats to control temperature, but there is some guesswork involved. You know, if the machine has been sitting for a long time, you're gonna need to do some cooling flushes probably, and you're really gonna be shooting in the dark, you know, estimating as to where your brew temperature is with that flush. Now, with a TCA and the PID, you're gonna have much more accurate brew temperatures, and you're gonna be able to be really confident in those brew temperatures. Now, in a lot of PID machines, you're gonna use a control panel and display to set the brew temperature you want. Now, on the Apartmento TCA, you enter programming mode, and then you use a lever, you lift it up and down to select one of four temperatures. So if you got one flash of the red light, you're gonna be at the low temperature setting of about 196 Fahrenheit. Two flashes is medium at about 200. Three is high at about 203, and four flashes is very high at about 208. So those are the temperatures I got in repeated temperature testing using a Passato TPD. To perform the test, I, each temperature setting, I allowed the machine to fully warm up for 25 minutes, then gave it another 10 minutes of rest. Then I did a short flush before attaching the device, then let pressure build within the device, and then noted the average temperature once reaching full temperature, taking into consideration a lag time of the temperature readings. The low setting average of 196 degree Fahrenheit and a max of 196.7 is where you might consider starting for a very dark roast coffee. 
the medium setting produced an average of 200 and a max of 200.6. Now, that's gonna be really nice for a medium roast. The high setting averaged out at 203 with a highest observed temp of 204, and that's a decent range for those lighter roasts. The very high setting averaged out to about 208 with a max of 208.4. So here's a chart of those results with the average steady temperature at each setting, max temperature, and the approximate boiler pressure at the start of the test. Now, I think most using this machine will stick to the medium setting for medium and dark roasts and use the high setting for lighter roasts, but you do have some leeway to play with lower and higher temperatures available at that low setting or the very high setting. Now on any machine using a heat exchange boiler, when you change the temperature in the boiler, you're also changing the pressure of the steam in that boiler and that can have an effect on your milk steaming performance. Here's a look at how the TCA did with that. I performed our standard test of how long it took to heat five ounces of fridge temp milk at about 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees at all four temperature settings. The roll in the frothing pitcher was very good even at the low setting and at very high, honestly, I had to be kind of careful it didn't roll right out of the top of the pitcher. You know, our staff who frothed on this machine really like the steam tip. It has a subtle change compared to the original Partimentos and other rocket machines we use, which we'll take a look at in a moment. So here are the results of our steaming test. Now, honestly, I was a little surprised by these results as the boiler pressure went up with the higher temperature settings. I really expected a little more difference in steaming times. Now, there was a five second jump between the low and medium settings but from medium on, everything was within one second. So here's a look at that new steam tip on the Apartamento TCA. It's a subtly different from what we've seen on previous Apartamentos and other rocket machines we've used. Now, again, it's a subtle difference, but take a look at those two holes. They're cut a little closer in and they don't angle out like we've seen on previous rocket machines. Now, I'm, again, that's a subtle difference. I'm not gonna try and explain the physics of it, but I can tell you it's unanimous pretty much with our staff here that they prefer the frothing performance with this newer style tip. It really produces a vigorous roll, helping to better mix your milk in the pitcher. All right, so that, that steam tip, that is a change from the previous Apartmento. Now what I've done is pop the hood on the Apartmento TCA, the new model here. And what I want you to notice, something, you know, a lot of people might not notice this, but on the new TCA, what we have is a one piece solid base frame. Now, a lot of times in the past, you know, the drift tray support here was a separate piece that was maybe riveted or welded or bolted on to the back end. And, you know, this is something we really pay attention to because we ship a lot of machines. And, you know, if a delivery person with well, that old style, if they weren't, you know, as gentle maybe as they should be, they go dropping this on your doorstep. A lot of times we get some bends right here uh, with that attachment style. That's not gonna happen. This construction style with a one piece solid base frame is very, very durable and not prone to that bending or breakage uh, when shipping. As we continue around here, the large 1.8 liter stainless steel boiler has a really nice insulating jacket on it. So this right here, this is the safety valve and that's routed to the drip tray by that tube um, and while the vacuum relief valve next door there isn't. Now that vacuum relief, it only releases very tiny amounts of moisture just as temps are reaching boiling point. Now, I would prefer to see that routed away as well, but the truth is vacuum reliefs release just tiny amounts of water, which quickly evaporates and rises out of the machine. So here's a water reservoir used in the machine, and it uses electrical conductivity to detect water in the reservoir, which sit on here uh, just like this. And what you'll see when you look in there is two little metal probes sticking out. Those make contact with a carrier on the outside that's not in place right now. Now, if you use mineral free or RO water in this machine, it's gonna think the machine is out of water because you need those minerals in the water to actually detect it. Now, in addition to the sensor in the water reservoir, you've got a fill level probe that's on top of the boiler right here, and that uses conductivity as well. So if you use that mineral free water in there, the machine's not gonna sense it. It's gonna keep the pump running because it doesn't think the boiler is full and that boiler could overfill and you could cause some problems in your machine. 
So I get asked all the time, hey Mark, why you know not use the RO or distilled water in my machine? If I do that, I won't get scale, right? And you're right, but you know, you'll have those sensing issues if you have a machine that operates like that. Also, the problem is that those waters are so pure that they can cause corrosion of metals in your machine and degrade certain seals and other components. So you don't want to use those. You do need some minerals in your water. So what do you do? Well, you want to get some of that calcium out. How do you do that? You soften the water. So there's traditional sodium-based softening, or what we prefer are some products from BWT. They're Aqualizer Pitcher or their Best Save in reservoir pad filters that you can use with this machine. What those do is they remove calcium, replace it with magnesium. Now that leaves you with a mineral level that's not gonna cause any corrosion in your machine. It's gonna give you a great flavor because magnesium is a great flavor extractor. Now also those options, they include uh, activated carbon within the filters, so it's gonna remove any chlorination. And, you know, filtering the water, that's really, really important. Scale's the number one cause of problems. Now, you might say, oh, well, I'll just descale my machine, but take a look, and manufacturers, including Rocket, recommend that you do not descale their machines. The reason is it's really hard to totally fill a boiler which produces steam to get the descaler all the way into that boiler and then get it all the way out. Another problem is you could be knocking off scale particles that could clog other parts of your machine. So do be sure, protect your machine, filter your water properly, you have great flavor, no scale. Up top is the PID probe which measures temperature in the boiler. There is a single solenoid over here that routes water, it's in the cold water path, and routes water for refilling the boiler. The majority of internal piping is copper, some of which is coated, and you're gonna also find some braided stainless and brass fittings. The vibration pump is on rubber mounts, and brew pressure is internally adjustable at the OPV. Now, that's probably something very few users are likely to do. If that's something that you'd like to do, you'd probably get easier and more precise control by equipping your TCA with flow control. Now, if you're not familiar with the capabilities of flow control, I do have a video linked up here that'll show you two simple ways to use it. One, you'll be able to uh, deal with a really fresh from roast coffee and reduce the brightness. And another, you'll be able to deal with a coffee that's maybe a little bit beyond its prime freshness. And you could also use flow control to save an extraction. Say your grind's a little too coarse, you could decrease the flow rate to still come out with a good shot based on timing. Now, I've worked with flow control on machines from many manufacturers, and this is the first time we've had it available out of the box on a rocket machine. To use it, you turn this valve to change the flow rate of brew water to the coffee. Now, it also includes a group-mounted pressure gauge, which reads brew pressure on the coffee. So, turn the valve, and you can increase or decrease flow rate and pressure. Now, beyond improving flavor, again, there's things you can do like saving a shot when your grind size isn't quite right. Since the Apartmento does not have a brew pressure gauge, you can have one on the machine right here at the group if you get flow control. And you know what, the brew pressures here, read at the group, they're gonna be much more accurate than machines which have that brew pressure gauge on the face. Those are generally measuring pressures much deeper inside the machine, so not accurately reflecting in some cases what's happening in the group. So if knowing true brew pressure is important to you, you can get that with flow control on the TCA. Now you can always operate the machine at its stock flow rate and pressure, and it's maybe a little easier on the flow control valve that we install on the Apartamento that it's gonna be on machines from some other manufacturers. All you have to do is just open this valve all the way. Here's a graph of flow rates in quarter turn of the valve increments. As you can see, the stock flow rate without flow control is seven grams per second. Fully opened at one and a half turns, you're pretty much there at 7.2. Now on machines from other manufacturers, it's possible to exceed the stock flow rate. It's as much as 30% on vibration pump machines, and as much as 200% on rotary pump machines. Touring the exterior of the machine, the back features a dimensional rocket logo. It's a really classy, if not sexy look, and check our website for options on the color of the vertical background. Now the one I have here has the copper on black. And beyond that, we have a variety of exclusive color options for the, I'll call them portholes 
of the machine and the base body of the machine is available in the black or in stainless. The porta filters which come with the machine are a new look for Rocket. They're angled so the double spout here, like when you set that on a countertop, it's gonna be parallel for easier tamping. The grip is rubberized, so it has a very slight give for a soft feel in your hand. I like the recess towards the front and the taper out to the end, which also feels really nice in the hand. And there's a little extra dress with the R logo embossed into a cap, which kind of reminds me of the caps on a glass bottle top. Wands are insulated for no burn properties. The drip tray is substantial and has magnets under the lip, which help secure it into place. The TCA comes with single and double spout porta filters, single and double filter baskets, plus a back flush disc, a nice tamper etched with the Rocket logo, a group brush, and a well-written, easy to understand manual in six languages. And they even throw in a couple of these logo stickers. So my final thoughts on the Apartamento TCA. It is a standout machine. You know, the staff here really liked frothing milk on the TCA. It's powerful even at lower settings and that new tip design really gets you a nice roll in the pitcher. You know, in the end, choosing between similar machines is probably really more about the look and feel and the Apartmental TCA here really has a distinct look. As I said up front, I've always thought rocket machines were easy to pick out from across the room and this one here is no exception. So where do you go from here? Well, use a link up here and you can get to our startup video for this machine. And that one, Nick, our product specialist, joins me as we do a full unboxing and setup of the machine, you know, the first startup, and we'll make an espresso and show you how to make a milk drink on the Apartamento. And if you're newer to espresso, I highly recommend you check out my video on the best grind size for espresso. In that one, you're gonna learn how to dial in your grind size to make a much better espresso. As always, if you have any questions about the Apartmental TCA here or anything coffee, use those comments and I'd be happy to get you a detailed answer. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm Mark, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back here soon for more of the best in everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.